Welcome to Process Control Design and Practice. My name is Tom Meadowcroft, and in this video, you will be introduced to the course objectives, the instructor, an overview of the course material, and to chemicalengineeringpractice.org. My name is Tom Meadowcroft. I teach design, process safety, and process control at Rowan University in the United States. I have degrees from the University of Toronto and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I worked in industry as a process control engineer, as a process engineer, and as a process designer for 25 years before becoming a full-time teacher of chemical engineering. The goal of this series of videos is to help students to learn to translate the goals of process design into the design of an automated process plant. This is very much a design course, not an analysis course teaching the mathematics of process design and linear control theory, which most chemical engineers receive as part of their degree. It's usually a course called process dynamics and control. Now, feedback control is a tool that we use rather than a concept that we study in this course. We are going to learn to understand automated processes, design new ones, and communicate with instrumentation and control professionals and then execute successful automated projects. This course is designed to be taken by chemical engineering seniors or recent graduates. The student will need to understand some chemical engineering unit operations like reactors, heat exchangers, and distillation columns. To profit from taking the course, you must participate by doing the exercises a lot of these exercises, because it's a design course, will require you to draw design documents. So while you can do these um, by hand with a pencil and ruler, I recommend that you uh, get the use of a software tool like Microsoft Visio Technical or Wondershare EasyDraw Max, both of which allow you to draw piping and instrumentation diagrams easily. And that's a lot of your exercises. I also recommend taking this course with one or more study partners. Uh, it is helpful to have someone to discuss the material with and to exchange your work for constructive criticism. So why do we need a course on process control design and practice anyway? And let me tell you, it's not unusual for a junior chemical engineer to be working either as a process or production engineer responsible for one to several processes. In my last employer before coming to teach, one such engineer had eight batch reactors and two absorbers in his care, and another had three continuous reactors and eight distillation columns in three process streams. Each had one or two operators that were operating all of those units and a control system with about a thousand input output points. The operator didn't so much operate as he or she was supervising the automation. So given that sort of a plant environment, which is very common these days, how does the engineer solve problems? How does he or she troubleshoot? How does the engineer improve the process? How does she, he or she manage safety? What about quality? And so the answer to that is that to change the plant, to change how it operates, the engineer must interact with and change the automation. You have to understand why the plan is automated and how it is automated so that you can make it better. You have to understand how the process goals of productivity, quality, and safety translate to an automated plant design. So why are process plants so automated today? First, skilled operators are rare and expensive and difficult to train. With automation, one operator can operate many reactors, many columns, several processes at one time. Quality. With 21st century quality standards, we can't have our processes run differently on four different shifts. Automation allows consistent quality and we can measure it. Safety and environmental incidents are the greatest risk most process plants face. We automate because computers can be more attentive react more quickly and follow procedures more consistently than any human operator possibly can without automation. 
What will we be covering in this series of videos? First, what is a state? A thermodynamic state is what you measure. An equipment state is what you manipulate. How do process objectives translate to control objectives? And how many degrees of freedom are available to meet those objectives? Next, how do we best use feedback control as a tool to satisfy some of those objectives? Techniques are going to include cascade control, split range control that are commonly used. Next, what are constraint objectives? How do we satisfy them? A lot of safety and environmental objectives are constraints. Continuous constraints require the use of feedback controllers. Discrete constraints require the use of digital logic, including interlocks and permissives. How do we design those? Batch processes work sequentially, moving through states step by step. How do we translate a chemist recipe into a batch algorithm? And how do we use modular design and the S88 standard to abstract and simplify those hundreds of I.O. points while designing our automated process, particularly if it is a batch process? Next, process control hardware. How do sensors, valves, and pumps work? And when should you choose between different options? How do all the computers in a control system work together? You should know enough to understand what you're buying and how they can go wrong at times. Next important topic, how should human operators and computers work together productively in an automated control room? How should we handle alarms? How should we handle emergencies? And then finally, how should we use what we know about our processes, our chemical engineering process models to enhance the automation in our plants? How should all of this design be documented? How do you write a functional specification that will communicate your design of an automated chemical plant clearly, save you money, and avoid startup problems with your project? This video series is hosted at chemicalengineeringpractice.org, which is where you should go if you found this on YouTube or elsewhere and are interested. The Center for Chemical Engineering Practice is founded on the idea that chemical engineers need more training in engineering practice than is received in most undergraduate programs, specifically in the areas of control, safety, and design. Uh, you will find their videos in order, uh, text to accompany those videos, together with exercises to complete. Those who wish to complete a test to demonstrate their new knowledge and earn a certificate will be able to do so. Instructors who wish to make use of these videos and other course material for their offline courses will find material there to help them as well. I'm Tom Meadowcroft. Welcome to Process Control Design and Practice.